to show you is how to create a screenplay using just Google Docs for your outline and Final Draft, software called Final Draft for your actual screenplay. This is what I use every single time that I write a, a movie screenplay. The first thing you want to do obviously is title your outline. Um, it could be a tentative title. So I'm going to make up a story for you guys today, um, literally right now. And let's just call it, my girlfriend is an alien. So I'm gonna write a sci-fi romantic comedy here. Some of the things you wanna do is uh, decide on the location of where this is going to take place. Um, what I actually do is I go on Google and <clears throat> depending on where I'm trying to make this story take place, I look up certain areas. Um, for example, if we want to do this in a cold weather city, um, you can type in cold weather towns, small towns, small towns, because it'll be easier to have this guy meet an alien in a smaller town than in a big city. Um, so let's type in America's prettiest winter towns and see what we have here. Do we even see any? Oh, slideshow. There you go. So let's see. Blowing Rock, North Carolina. Jackson, Wyoming. Montana. Charlottesville, Virginia. Okay, I, I kind of like uh, Virginia. Virginia could work. So let's work with um, Charlottesville, Virginia. And then you want to type in um, to find our website. And you want to read a little bit about what the city is like. I know this sounds silly, but by doing this, you'll be able to visualize the setting of where this is going to take place. So let's go into uh, usually, oh yeah, about Charlottesville. So here's where you have an about. Tells you a little bit about it. Okay. So usually what I do is I start by writing setting and then I do a bullet a bullet list Charlottesville Virginia and then I do a link to that so I can check it out later on okay the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna have <coughs> um, we're going to look for a location, so we go on to Google Maps. And same thing, I want to type in Charlottesville, Virginia. And what I'm looking for is a neighborhood with potentially like a nice backyard, like I don't know what this is here. But it looks like it's a an area with the backyard. Nice big houses. And look at that house right there. And it has like a parking lot. It's a church. So I kind of like this little block here because it has nice houses, lots of land, and it has a parking lot here where maybe she lands. Um, so I'm going to take this, I'm going to take this, I'm going to share, and I want to take that, 113 Langford Avenue. Okay. So now I have the city and the information about that city. And then I have an actual location of where I could see this taking place. So I have kind of a setting. There's a lot of land around this house where maybe this alien will land over here. Maybe I kind of like to visualize things so it makes it easier to write. So the next thing you want to do um, is you want to characters. And obviously you need 
the main guy. I'm going to pick a name. I'm going to call him Jake. I'm going to say he's mid 20s. Um, we'll say he's average looking. Okay. The alien girl. Doesn't have a name yet. We'll figure that out as we move along. Don't really have like a description for her just yet because she's an alien, so she may look strange. We'll figure that out. And then of course the main guy has friends. So main guy's friends. And again, we'll figure that out as we go along. Um, the best thing to do here is to kind of just figure out how many characters you think you want. For low budget films, it's always best to have like just a couple of characters and a couple of locations. Keep it nice and simple so that anybody could shoot that. If it's big budget, you're gonna have lots of characters, lots of locations. But for the purposes of this tutorial, I want to teach you how to write a very simple screenplay for a low budget independent film that you yourself could actually film if you wanted to. So we'll stick with just this and we'll do like the main guy's parents. Okay. And then um, maybe the, the main guy has a dog. And we'll call him Rufus. We'll say he's a, a yellow Labrador. Five years old. So I'm just making this up. Okay. So next is the outline. I'm just trying to get through this for you so it's not too much information. So this is where I like to put one line equals one page. So first page, we're going to say main guy, oh, Jake. Now, now we have his name. Jake is hanging out with his friends at home drinking. Okay, so they're partying. We'll just put party. Okay, um, Jake's friends pass out. It's middle of the night. Rufus starts barking. Jake takes Rufus outside. Suddenly, a light appears in the sky. Rufus takes off. Jake chases him. They reach the area where the lights landed, crashed. We'll figure that out. Jake has no idea what he's looking at, but suddenly something appears. He is introduced to an alien. So this is the first six pages of the script automatically jumping in. So a good rule of thumb is if you can make an agent or a producer flip to page 11, or in some cases 21, because they it's either the first 10 pages or the first 20 pages. Every producer or agent is different. The first 10 pages or 20 pages of a script is the first 10 or 20 minutes of the movie, because each page equals one minute. That's usually the rule of thumb when you're filming. Each page of a script equals one page of filming. Except for like action scenes, they obviously can be a lot longer. And some dialogue scenes, if it's just dialogue, can be very quick as well. So it varies. But the, the rule of thumb is one page equals one, uh, one minute of screen time. So if you can make someone uh, turn to page 11, that means that you got them hooked. So the first six pages here, um, as we see, is um, we introduce Jake, his friends, the light comes, the, the dog chases it, and he's introduced to an alien. So that's obviously going to be like a page of, you know, we'll put, he tries to speak to the alien. Um, we'll say that he pulls up his smartphone to try to show the alien things. The alien then takes the shape of someone it sees in a video or something. I'm just making this up. We can we can go from here. So let's just take this now. What we have this is just a basic outline, nothing crazy. Let's go into Final Draft. Okay. And let's start a new project. Okay, you can go to a title page. Girlfriend is an alien. I like Final Draft because everything is always pre-filled out for you. Not based on any true stories. 
Don't put your information, unlike popular belief, you don't want to put any information on it. You just want to have the title written by and your name. That's it. Okay, so now I can close this. Okay, we are now going to begin. And we are going to begin by going to the outline. I'll do this, I'll do this side by side so you can see both. So Jake is hanging out with his friends at home partying. So that means interior. And there's something called smart type in Final Draft, so you don't have to actually type everything. Interior, home, Charlottesville, VA, night. Okay. You have to visualize this. You have to visualize Jake and his friends are now, say, playing video games or playing beer pong. Um, party is heard from the backyard of a three-story wooden house. You want to capitalize party because that's the sound that's being heard. So whenever you want to you, you want to have people see something or hear something, you want to capitalize that word and you'll see some more in a minute. Okay, so a party is heard from the backyard of a three-story wooden house. We're gonna do, oops, and this is supposed to be exterior home, sorry. Because now we're gonna do interior home, continuous. See how it's all smart type? As we travel through the, I'm trying to think of how to describe this house. Look, it looked colonial, I guess, through the modernized colonial home. Uh, the sounds of a party get louder. A yellow lab for door, Rufus five years old, laps up a bowl of water. He runs down the stairs to the basement to reveal. Whenever you want to reveal something or you want to show something's about to happen or you want to pause and then show something, do two dashes. Okay? So this is how you explain a character. You, you capitalize them, okay? You want to explain what they are, their name, and how old they are, and then potentially a description. But with a yellow Labrador, you don't really have to do that. So he runs down the stairs to the basement to reveal a full-on party with beer pong, music, And Jake, 26 years old. And what do we say about him? Average looking, average looking, blonde hair. Okay? So oh, let me let me step back here because I'm just I'm just writing. <laughs> okay, so you usually want to get like right into something. So you don't want to wait too long. You do want to describe your surroundings a little bit, like I just did. I described the parties heard in the backyard of a three-story home. We get inside the house. It's modernized colonial. We see a dog drinking water. He goes down the stairs to the basement, and his friends are all playing beer pong. There's music, so you can kind of figure that out, right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna jump right into some dialogue. So what you do is you hit enter, tab, and the person's name. You hit enter again, and it goes into dialogue mode, okay? So here's where I'm gonna write, dude, you're cheating. Well, we're gonna introduce one of Jake's friends. On the opposite side of the beer pong, is Mike it looks like beer pong is getting uh, maybe it's a hyphen in there and here's where you got to do some research so I actually don't know how beer pong is spelled 
Is it with a hyphen? No, it looks like it's just a, uh, it might not have the, huh, strange. So we'll undo those. But there is no word Pong, so I guess I'll learn it. Once you learn it, you won't see that anymore. On the, on the opposite side of the beer pong table, um, oh, I forgot to mention, he's, he play he throws a ping pong ball into red cups on the other side of a table, a long table. Jake. We'll say Mike instead of Jake. So Jake throws a ping, and you usually want to space these out. Let's say he throws a ping pong table, I'm sorry, ping pong ball into a red cup on their side of a long table. Mike, dude, you're cheating. On the opposite side of the beer pong table is Mike. Mid 20s, brown hair, stocky. Jake, so he's replying to Mike. Actually, let's keep, we're going to keep going. Mike, it's going to say continues. Continued. You're leaning too far over, man. Shut the hell up. No, I'm not. He continues, we'll put Jake, continues to lean over the table to make a shot. Now, again, you want to always write in present tense, like real time. So like he continues to lean over the table. Not Jake continued to lean over the table and laughed. No, you want to write that he, he's doing it right now. So the reader thinks this is happening right now. Okay, so Jake continues to lean over the table to make a shot. Cindy, 20, mid-twenties, blonde hair, big boobs, leans over the table. And you don't want to write big boobs, just write nice curves. <laughs> Let's make this polit politically correct. Oh man, it's funny. We, we should save this too. My girlfriend is an alien. Okay, so Jake sees her boobs and gets distracted. He misses a shot. Mike and Cindy laugh at him. Jake's partner, Rich, 28, late 20s, bald, unattractive, smacks his arm. Rich, come on, man. You're going to let her do that to you? So... Now Jake looks upset and you got and again I'm making this up as I go along. Jake looks upset and leaves the table. Whatever. I give up. You guys win. He goes over to the other side of the room where some other friends are playing video games. He opens a bottle of beer and drinks with them. Okay, so we just basically established the party, some dialogue, some characters, all on the first page. So let's go on to the next part. Okay, 
See that? We got first page. Snake's friends pass out. The party continues. It starts to get pretty late and people begin to pass out. So we're going to do interior, kitchen, 3 a.m. Rufus barks at the patio door incessantly. And I probably spelled that wrong, so you autocorrect by doing this. And I forgot. Okay, capitalize barks. Make this bigger. I just realized I could have made this bigger the whole time to make this easier for you guys. Why did I not make it bigger? <laughs> because there's so many things to do <laughs> when you're writing. So here we go. Continue your kitchen, 3 a.m. Rufus barks at the patio door incessantly. A light flashes in the sky about a mile away. Jake eventually hears the barking and wakes up. He straggles up the stairs to the kitchen and finds Rufus still barking at the patio door. Oops, not Rufus. Jake. What's the matter, boy? Jake kneels down. Rufus stops barking to... stops barking, wags his tail, and jumps on Jake's legs. Jake kneels down to pet Rufus and calm him down. Rufus licks Jake's face. It's okay, Rufus. Why are you barking? It's okay, Rufus. Why are you barking? Rufus directs Jake to the patio door. He walks over to it. To open the, to open the door. Rufus flies out the door to the backyard. Jake stands in the doorway. He sees the light in the sky and suddenly wakes up. What the hell? Jake runs outside to find Rufus is chasing the direction of the light. Okay, so I'm basically making this all up as I go along. So you can see, um, we're at the part where Jake takes Rufus outside, so light appears, Rufus takes off. Now we're only on page two, but we're getting to the part point where we're at page three. The light gets closer and closer by the second. Rufus is far ahead. Jake tries to keep up. The light now has a whizzing sound accompanying it. It is much larger than before. 
It looks like a spaceship. Rufus. So let's say, let's just say that at this point it's going to crash. Behind a tree line. So I'm, I'm basically thinking they're in the backyard, they're running, they go through a couple of parking lots and a couple of fields, and there's like a tree line, like a forest is starting, and that's where the spaceship is going to land. So you put behind a tree line, the light disappears with a thud, a loud thud. Not so much of a crash as a landing. It doesn't disappear, it, dis it dissipates. That's probably misspelled as well. Dissipates. So now we're exterior forest moments later. Let's do conti continuous. Jake runs through the forest. Rufus parks. Jake follows his his barks. He finally arrives. Okay, as his eyes adjust to the... And here's where you want to start describing things. So... <clears throat> as his eyes adjust to the... Alright, so here's where you want to start describing things. And the best way to do that is to use a thesaurus. So, bright. Brilliant, dazzling, glistening, golden, intense, luminous, radiant, shiny, silvery, sparkling. I like intense. As the eyes adjust to the intense white, and take the light. Flow from the spaceship, Jake now sees that it looks like a teardrop and is luminescent. And I believe luminescent means that it's kind of see-through, but just to make sure. not really what I was looking for in terms of a definition. So let's see, luminescent. Nope. Kind of, let's try opaque. <clears throat> Transparent. Translucent, that's the word I was looking for. Translucent. Inside the ship Jake slowly inches his way toward the ship. He sees some sort of being, humanoid being, sitting in a sitting in a cockpit of sorts. Rufus 
is tightly is tightly uh, hmm. it is super close to Jake's legs and moves at the same pace he does. <clears throat> oh my god. Jake rubs his eyes in disbelief. The humanoid now sees Jake and the spaceship lets out a bunch of steam or smoke as the front of the ship opens up. Let's say steam. Jake and Rufus jump back. Jake pulls out his smartphone and tries to record this on video. He notices the smartphone starts to malfunction so he <clears throat> uh, confusingly puts it away so here we go the alien is about to come out of the spaceship and you have to describe everything as the humanoid begins to crawl her to come out of the ship it suddenly hmm, Jake notices that it is quite tall and has a bluish color to its skin stands in front of Jake now and just stares at him and Rufus. Rufus starts to bark at the humanoid. The humanoid slowly crouches down just a bit, extends its hand and gazes at Rufus in a hypnotic way. Rufus whines and lays down in the grass. Who? What are you? This is how you explain like a stutter, like, who, what are you? Like, that's how an actor would perceive that. You don't have to put descriptions of how Jake is confused. You don't have to explain what his face looks like. Sometimes you do where I put, he notices the smartphone starts to malfunction, so he confusingly puts it away. So, you know, in my case, if it was my smartphone, which is here I'd be somewhere I'd be like this I'd be like trying to trying to record the alien on my smartphone and as it starts to malfunction I'd be like this put it away so you'd have to kind of explain the way someone moves again anything you can see or hear is what you want to explain in the screenplay the humanoid looks at Jake now with a peaceful look.
You have to try to think of what the humanoid is going to say to Jake. Who? So, this is the beginning of this story. We've gotten as far as... He tries to speak to the alien. Pulls up the smartphone to try to show the alien things. So, at this point I could explain, I could show the smartphone. Maybe the alien touches it to turn it back on. So... And, and then the, the humanoid starts to take shape of someone in the video. You can explain the shape shifting. I'm not going to get that far. I just wanted to show you the beginnings of this. Um, let's say that from here, it cuts to, cut to interior government facility moments later. And here we could explain that, you know, multiple screens on a wall show the trajectory of the ship landing site general wilson 40s salt and pepper hair stocky hovers over a console. What are the coordinates? Private. So he's talking, so now we're in a different location. We're in a government facility. A general is over someone's console. The private is sitting there looking for the coordinates, you know, and then the private, we could type the private thirties nerdy the nerdy private in his thirties types into a computer into on, on a keyboard private latitude 45, longitude, 68. I'm just making those numbers up. You want to do some research and find out. Matter of fact, we have that. See, there's a reason why I told you to do what I told you to do. So if we look up Langford Avenue now, okay, the coordinates are right here. 38.021 and negative 78, 75. You know, we have the coordinates. So I can actually type those coordinates. I can say 38 negative 78 75 i could say that instead i could you know but whatever the numbers really i don't really know how that works so you want to look at how does lat lat latitude and longitude work i think that is right there what it is 38 78 75 so i could just say that but see that's another reason why it's smart to do stuff like this okay the general or wilson looks at the screen at the dot on at the green so I'm going to capitalize green dot because we're, we're focusing in on that and if you are a director and you want to film this scene you would actually write as the camera zooms in to the green dot on the screen so you would actually write as the camera zooms into the green dot on the screen Wilson grins. We got him. Boom. Now we can go back. Cut to exterior spaceship. Moments later. This is how you go back and forth between scenes. So I think we can stop here you have an idea. You don't want to do cut twos and zooms in if you are just writing what's called a spec script. A spec is a script that you send to an agent or a producer if you're trying to get the script sold 
and allow a director or a movie studio to make the movie for you. You don't want to include any camera movements, angles, cuts, or anything like that. So that's, this was just to show you an example. If you plan on filming this, you want to include all of them. If you plan on selling the script, don't include any of them. And once you're done, you can print this by doing Adobe PDF, include the title page, and then you will see the PDF. My girlfriend is an alien. Here's page one, page two, page three, and four. An industry standard also is what's called white space. If you notice, there's a lot of white space on this script. See how much white space there is? Agents and producers love white space. If there's too much description and too much, like this is kind of, this description here is kind of a bit, but it's important because we're, we're first seeing the spaceship and the alien. So that's okay to put some description in there. But normally you don't want a lot of description. You want to try to keep it minimal. You want to keep the story moving. You want the, the story moving. And the more it's moving, the faster it moves, um, the better. Also, you want to try to avoid explaining too much. So you want it, what's called um, early to leave and late to arrive. So you want to get into a scene late and you want to leave early to keep people thinking what's going on. So for example, I wrote here, um, who, what are you? The, the human looks at Jake with a peaceful look. Who? Cut to the government facility. So we don't know what happens next because we cut to the government facility. And when he says, got him, we got him. We don't know what the government's going to do next. Are they going to get into like cars and airplanes or whatever, or helicopters and fly out? We don't know. We're at the spaceship now. So if I write a little bit about the spaceship now and how they're talking or whatever, maybe the, suddenly helicopters appear. Shit. Well, we didn't know because we didn't write that. So you want to write uh, the scenes late to arrive, early to leave. If you can do that with some white space, you'll be good to go. And as you write your script, your characters will start to develop. You'll start changing your outline. And what I recommend is every time you finish a page, check to see if it matches your outline. If it doesn't, change your outline while you're writing and continue to write these points as you continue. The reason is, as you get further and further into your script, you're going to be referencing this outline to see which characters you talked about, which scenes you talked about. You might realize that using the outline helps you decide what to write in each scene. That's what I do at least. And anytime you have any research, because you're going to be doing research in this, especially for the government agents and stuff like that, you'll have to figure out like ranks, locations, weapons, uh, you know, buildings, their cars, their helicopters. Start putting all that research in here. Always put the research in here. So, you know, and it, it just so happens in Charlottesville, Virginia is not that far away from the Pentagon and Langley and, and the, you know, all the government agents. So you'll be able to start putting that information in here. You'll be referencing a lot of uh, a lot of stuff. So, for example, I can show you um, one of my uh, previous scripts that I recently finished. I can show you what it looks like, what my outline looks like. So, check this out. This is what my outline looks like for a screenplay. You can see it is. very long. <laughs> well, actually, the industry standard for a script is between 80 and 120 pages. Mine is roughly 100, 99 pages. So each page I wrote down what it was. So I can go back and forth and look and see how the story's moving along. Research outline, all of these are links. All these things you see, these are all links. Look at this research outline. It's 33 points of research. And each one has a Wikipedia link or a government link or a story or a website or, you know, so you need to do the same thing. Okay. It's important that you do that um, because then you'll be able to, to write the script the right way. Hopefully this helps. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them in the comments. All right. So thanks for watching this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you learned something. If there's ever any tutorial that you want me to create in the future, leave a comment to let me know what it is, or you can email me, me at jasonsherman.org. And you can also check out my other tutorials, 
howto.jasonsherman.org. I'll see you in the next one.